<clears throat> Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery, Part 356. <clears throat> subject today is the inheritance of the saints. We want to do a little <clears throat> review, and then we're going to go on into some things dealing with <clears throat> the inheritance of the sons of God. Scripture teaches, at the gathering, the saints come into their joint inheritance in Christ. Romans 8, verse 17. <clears throat> And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So we see the key to the inheritance, the joint inheritance, is experiencing the sufferings, the sacrifices of Christ. <clears throat> Turn to Psalms 50, verse 4 to 5. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. So there's a gathering from the heavens, a judgment on the earth. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So here he defines, just as Romans 8, 17 defines who is going to inherit the... <coughs> the things of the Father with him. Those who have been credentialed to do so by experiencing the sacrifices, the sufferings of Christ in this life. <coughs> Having said that, Scripture teaches the inheritance of the saints is eternal and exists exclusively in the regions of light where only the born again can manifest their presence. Turn to Colossians, first chapter, verse 12. giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet are fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. So our inheritance lies in the levels, the regions, the vast estates of light. There is no inheritance in any darkness zones or any darkness region. There's no inheritance in the physical region. It's all in the regions of glory. <clears throat> Which, uh, as an addendum, the regions of glory and the inheritance are stratified <clears throat> levels of perfection, states of perfection. Which 
brings us to the next principle. The scripture indicates those who inherit the mantle <coughs> of ruler of all the Lord's goods mm -hmm. will be known by their level of light. The highest level of light is the level of wisdom, which outshines all other levels of glory. <coughs> Daniel, 12th chapter, yeah. verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever. So we find <clears throat> that the highest level of light emanation <clears throat> comes from those <clears throat> who are <clears throat> called in wisdom. Their light basically is compared to the light of a galaxy as in comparison to another's light who might have been a soul winner whose light would be um, the brilliance of a star. Now what we find is interesting. Turn to Philippians, third chapter. Verse 20, Verse 20, for our conversation, our lifestyle, is in heaven, or in the heavens, in the original Greek. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who <coughs> shall change our vile body, the current corrupted body of flesh, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. So what we find, all the prototokes are going to <clears throat> be fashioned <clears throat> after the Lord. Everybody's going to have the same glorified divine body. But <clears throat> the distinctions are going to come forth in, <clears throat> although everybody has the same body, you will be able to distinguish who is an elder, who is a priest, the level of priesthood, you're going to be able to distinguish <clears throat> the individuals within the priesthood level of authority. Why? Because it all takes place in the domain of light. And the light is going to emanate each individual characteristic to a point where there is no problem understanding and distinguishing that particular member of the body. Yes. Okay, so just before we got to where we're at right now, mm -hmm. you were giving us the differences between those who are wise who shine as the as the firmament or galaxies okay, and then the, the the soul winner shines like a star. Mm -hmm. Jonesy, there's such a vast, immense notable difference between the two glories. One is extremely, by far, in excess of the other. Mm -hmm. A pinpoint versus... Floodlight. Well, even more intense than that, because see, one star versus a galaxy. 
which has ma how many stars. So now, it's just a it's a peculiar thing because we do know there are, there are some soul, soul winners in our history, and profess to do that, and that was you know it's a very admirable thing. I mean, uh, by far many people, many more souls been saved by individuals than I have saved, than I've assisted in sa being saved. The thing of it is, is the vastness of the difference of the glories is so highly notable, it's to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> just being wise puts you in a completely different category. You're in, in, a, in a similar category, I would think, as the three of us. Mm -hmm. For lack of better terms, you know, I'm, I'm just yammering on right now, guys. So um, I'm just. We there, understand. There is no comparison. There is no comparison. Exactly, but it's not taught. It's not emphasized. <coughs> it's not distinguished at all. Which is shameful because it means that the average saint isn't prepared <coughs> for what uh, what awaits him in eternity. He's just going to step into a reality. <coughs> and total ignorance. Which he believes he has or had no control over. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. People are not encouraged to pursue the covenant relation, the significance of it. And of course, <coughs> because of that, they're going to have to give an account before the Lord. He's well, not going to be happy at all. We know that there are leaders who will tell you that they're not chasing anything. They just want to receive whatever the Lord's going to give them. But it doesn't say that in the no, Bible. No, it tells you to pursue mm. with See, all Mark that's in you. It, God doesn't put any value in ignorance. But let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture indicates they will, as sons, and part of their inheritance will be their place over the high council in the sides of the north, a place also coveted by Lucifer. <clears throat> the high council, as we've discussed, is that region in which <clears throat> the authorities, the angelic administrators congregate, have their assembly, in which they oversee the running of the creation. They've been given authority by the Lord. Turn Isaiah 14, verse 12 to 13. Isaiah 14, 14. verse 12 to 13. <clears throat> When, when Satan says, I too shall sit amongst the congregation the size of the north, he's just wanting to be part of a, of a high group. Not so that he can do anything of any significance. He just wants to be part of a group, of the <coughs> highest group. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's interesting that because that's similar to some Christians. They just want to be part of a high group without having any obligation to do anything about it. Yeah, they want it. recognition as authority, but they don't want to put in the uh, effort and take the responsibility. <clears throat> Isaiah 14, 12 to 13. How art thou fallen from heaven? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. The mm -hmm. dawn star hierarchy, mm -hmm. which is the highest order of angelic authority. I will sit also, as they sit, upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. In other words, the exclusive high council ordained by God to basically <clears throat> run the creation that's been his desire from the beginning he has never been achieved has never achieved it he never will but since he then goes on to say that he will be like the most high in verse 14 mm -hmm. the implication is that he 
reaches above the congregation? No, it means that <clears throat> he wants his own fiefdom to run it the way God runs the creation. Okay, interesting. He's not that stupid. He knows he, he can never mm -hmm. replace the most high. See, again, Mr. Jones, he just wants to be able to do stuff as God does, but in the end result, it is not righteousness, it's not for betterment of anything, it's to enhance self. Mm -hmm. There is no fantastic, you know, it's kind of like Biden who doesn't have a, a, a plan for, the, for America, you know, so, he, but he just wants the position. It's a, it's a, such a, I can see, see it for what it is, and I praise the Lord that he's allowed me to understand it enough. <coughs> yes, principle, scripture teaches, <clears throat> they will inherit full access to the tree of life in the midst of the garden of God, which imparts unimagined pleasures to those that participate in it. <laughs> Ezekiel 28, verse 12 to 13, we see that Lucifer had access to the garden. It never says he had access to the tree of life, though. Ezekiel 28, 12 to 13. <coughs> Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, which is a, he is a type, king of Tyrus is a type of Lucifer. Mm. King of Tyrus ran uh, Tyre, merchant city, mercantile system actually, which ultimately was destroyed by uh, Alexander the Great. Mm. So what it's talking about is Lucifer is the anti-type to this individual who runs a cosmic mercantile system out of a city, Harlot City. <clears throat> Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. So the first thing you find that they attribute to Lucifer was wisdom. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God, Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold, <coughs> the workmanship of thy tablets, and of thy pipes was repaired in thee in the day that thou was created. So what's been said here, when it talks about that, thou has been in Eden, the garden of God, is <coughs> not referring to the garden of Eden on earth. No. Because the garden that Lucifer was in existed at a time in which <clears throat> there was no human race, there was no garden uh, on earth whatsoever. Lucifer hadn't fallen. Garden of Eden didn't come in until after all of that took place. It's talking about a beautiful uh, residence that is exclusively um, reserved for the highest uh, <clears throat> elites. Since we know that Lucifer was created with huge potential, mm -hmm. should we understand that his wisdom was equal to or greater than that of Y.H.V.H.? No. Before he fell, obviously. No, no. Mm. Because YHVH's wisdom is patterned after the Creator. Okay. Lucifer's wisdom is the highest of a created being, mm. not patterned after the Creator. Okay. <coughs> Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Very good. So therefore, it's not <coughs> possible for any amount of waters to make him great as in equal to no. YHVH. No. <coughs> so what we find here, <coughs> you're given... <coughs> A description of a region that transcends comprehension from a human perspective. It talks about these beautiful, radiant <coughs> firestones, is what they're called, in this garden 
that you can use as decorate, you can decorate yourself with them. That's what he did. Sorry, just one second. Mm -hmm. Quickly go back to the last point. I'm understanding you to mean that the entire White Ridge family is patterned after the image of, of the Lord, right? Yes, yeah. but you have levels of sure, perfection. Sure, sure, but they're all in his image. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what you find here, <clears throat> this region is some a, a place that you can walk into and experience. Remember, we said everything in eternity operates from the medium of light mm. so this is a source in which <clears throat> uh, from a human perspective it can't be comprehended but you have a panorama a prism of lights that festoon this region there are trees <clears throat> there's a uh, flora fauna there are things that are so um, unbelievably beautiful and radiant that only the highest created beings can have access to them. Now we're going to read a little more about this. <clears throat> Turn to Revelation 21 verse 7. This is the Father speaking. <clears throat> he that overcometh, so this is the prerequisite, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. So the prerequisite for the inheritance is you have to be an overcomer. If you are an overcomer, now, there are stages of overcoming. You're going to have people that go through the tribulation period that constitute overcoming, sure. but they overcome on a lower level. Mm -hmm. He's talking about being an overcomer prior to the rapture and being able to enter into the highest state of sonship, the adoption, yeah. in which you can enjoy life to the fullest. <clears throat> you will inherit all things in that context. So, thus we understand that the enjoyment of life, as you described it, cannot be enjoyed by anybody less than the group that you're referring to. Yes. yes. That's, such a, that's such an incredible concept, the more that you ponder it. Because I don't believe that anybody, when I say anybody, I'm talking about organized Christianity, will comprehend the significance of that statement. Unless they study the scriptures. Now turn to Revelation, the second chapter, verse 7. <clears throat> We're going to look to, in, the, in this context, the garden. Unless they study the scriptures. They don't know how to read the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> People uh -huh. have this false sense that the Bible was only intended for scholars, yes. pastors, yes. clergy. People with certificates. And that's a result of organized religion that's fostered that, that criminal attitude on, on the mindset of people. But that's been the case uh -huh. since the day dot. Yep. The Bible is given to the born again son of God to prepare himself for life and eternity. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Revelation 2 verse 7 <clears throat> He that hath an ear let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. To him that overcometh, here again, the key, prerequisite, I will give to eat of the tree of life, 
which is in the midst of the paradise, talking about the garden of Ezekiel 28, of God. So it's talking about <clears throat> you inherit the tree of life as the son of God. <clears throat> it comes as a package. Your position, your state of glory, your characteristics, the tree of life, join inheritance with Christ. Everything is given to you as a package when you are declared overcomer. Which brings us to the next principle. <clears throat> Scripture teaches <clears throat> those who do not overcome will not have full access to the tree of life nor residence <clears throat> to the city. <clears throat> Revelation 21, verse 23 to 26. <laughs> yes. And I saw no temple therein. The Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. It's talking about New Jerusalem when it settles on the new earth. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. So there won't be <coughs> any other light in the city other than the light of the Father, the Son, and the Bride. <coughs> And the nations of them that are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. <clears throat> so we find that the nations reside outside the city. They walk in the light that comes from the city. Verse 25, And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. So what happens, <clears throat> the nations, because they are not overcomers, they are only saved by faith, the faith foundation, reside at a distance apart from the center of activity in the new <clears throat> Jerusalem they participate in a limited way how do they participate let me just quickly jump in here sure I'm looking at your notes the mm -hmm. glory and honor the characteristics we're understanding that the characteristics of the nations are the glory and honor but because they didn't overcome this is what I'm understanding to mean. Therefore, mm -hmm. they didn't get the fullness of that characteristic. <clears throat> Look at it this way. <clears throat> Characteristics are identifying things that in this environment, <clears throat> in this um, state of perfection, <clears throat> mark you out as unique. It's talking about the characteristic, not the person. Okay. For instance, <clears throat> The United States is known as a prosperous, mighty nation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Aside from the individual that's currently in the position of authority, mm -hmm. you take somebody who's a great individual who was one time a president, maybe a Lincoln or a, a Roosevelt or somebody, <clears throat> or even like in Britain, a Churchill, took you through a war, You're victorious. That person represents that nation. Okay. So when that person goes some, let's say Churchill goes somewhere, mm -hmm. the, word, the first thing the person thinks about is the history, the characteristic of okay. what he has done relating to the nation he represents. Oh, he took England through a war and you know conquered the Nazis, and that's a, this is the characteristic that the leader takes with him. He gets the credit for the specific connotation of glory of the rulership that he has. The nation itself is outside. They can never come in and permanently associate 
<coughs> but the leader can. And so this is what they're talking about. When he comes in to the city, he brings the glory of that particular group that he is ruling over okay. with him. So we're just talking about the ruler of the... Yeah, only the ruler. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I misunderstood that part. All right. No problem. Yeah, only the ruler. <clears throat> and he's getting the credit for bringing the, the, that group sure. to that point of admiration. The group itself, they will never share in, in, in that type of, right. of, a, of a glory. Now, Revelation 22, verse 2. And in the midst of the street event, on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, yielded a fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree for the healing of the nations. So what we find here, the nations can never participate of the fruit. They can never participate of anything but the leaves. And that's only going to be for a lim limited time. <clears throat> the healing, once the nations are healed, that's it. They have no more access to the tree of life. Since the members of the nations, except for the ruler, can't go in, mm -hmm. should we understand that the ruler brings out these leaves to them? No, I said they have limited access. To the leaves? Yes. Right, but not, you know, they can't walk up and down in how they No, like, no, right, no, no, right. no. You will note one thing. <clears throat> Revelation... 21 verse 21 gives you a description of the city <clears throat> and the 12 gates were pearls every single gate was of one pearl and the street of the city was pure gold as it were transparent glass it's only one street one street now the city is described as being 1500 miles wide 1500 miles high hundred miles broad one street the street is for those who walk <clears throat> it's for the nations when they come in they walk into the street to the tree of life participate in the leaves and they also come in for another purpose turn to Isaiah 26 Isaiah 66 verse 23 to 24 Excuse me. <clears throat> and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. So it's talking about periodically at specific feast times and festivals. <clears throat> which will be on the new earth they will come in to the presence of the father to worship the father and the son notice what it says and they shall go forth so they come in they worship and they gotta leave after that they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that are transgressed against me for the worm shall not die neither shall their fire be quenched and they shall be in a boring unto mm -hmm. all flesh they have limited access to the street. <clears throat> That's it. They don't go off the street. They go wherever it is. The street leads them. The tree of life. The throne of God. They worship. Mm -hmm. And then they are right back out through the gate. <clears throat> While passing the gulf. With the, so this regular presentation of the people forces them to regularly remember. Because they, they're looking at this gulf. Where they could have been. Exactly. Had they not. <clears throat> the Father has engineered all of this mm. for eternity. They're going to re remember. That's tough. They'll enjoy life on the lowest, lowest, lowest level. Just short of the torment regions. Right. <clears throat> and they will know why. So, somebody who ends up on the new earth 
isn't really enjoying life to, well, this is the way that I'm looking at it, any great degree, bearing in mind that they're reminded once a month, let's say, of where they could have, that's, I don't think that's enjoyment. Well, it is, <clears throat> because the other times you're in a region with light, okay. you're, you're, you're having, a, you're, 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 you cannot enjoy, but enjoy, cannot, there's no yes. depression, there's no uh, temptation, there's no nothing here but the father does all things wisely and he is regulating the enjoyment to the lowest okay. level okay. yes okay in the on this new earth I suspect the answer is going to be yes the scenery is consistently change altering changing for the better or because it's alive it's not changing it's um <clears throat> enhancing Flourishing. Hmm. Okay. It's so it does not remain the same. It's in motion. Yes, but <clears throat> when you say the, the difference between things eternal and things temporal is that things temporal change. Okay. Things eternal remain uh, in the beauty and the glory for what they are designed to manifest. Okay, I'm, I'm going off of what he, he brought up which made me come to the, the realization that if you're on the new earth, okay, you're not in heaven, but you're going to enjoy eternal life. Yes. And you're going to enjoy, I'm trying to understand the, the difference. I mean, what kind of enjoyment am I going to... He said regulated. That's what uh, made my ears prick up. He said a regulated enjoyment. Yes. So the Father has said, look, you know, you could have done considerably better. <coughs> Every month, when you come to get your leaves, you're going to look at that because that's where you could have been. That would that that minimize or mitigates, I should say, the enjoyment at least for my. Just like your question after that mm. is like, how is that enjoyable? I mean, is it, you know, after a while, it's okay. Yeah, thank you. And I'm not in hell. You know. <laughs> well, you have to take into consideration this is one tiny aspect of life in eternity. Enjoyment. <clears throat> When you feel satisfaction, when you feel, unlike life on earth, life on earth is sensory enjoyment. Okay. Life in eternity is a full pleasure of a spiritual appreciation, satisfaction, peace, love, joy at the existence that you are participating in. Everything you do brings pleasure. Everything you see brings pleasure. Yes. Whatever you engage in, there is no situation where you're going to say, you know, that didn't quite meet my expectations. Right, right. You're going to enjoy the fullest of life, but on the lowest level of okay. life. Okay. What do you get enjoyment out of? Innocence. Yeah. Okay, you take a look at an animal. You can see its beauty, its innocence. You get enjoyment out of that, sure. don't you? Yeah. Well, you enhance that a million fold in eternity. All the life forms around you that are dovetailing with you, loving you, <clears throat> the inhabitation that you are in, everything you put your hand to is going to bring you pleasure. Praise the Lord. We'd never see him. <clears throat> <laughs> no. no he'd, he'd be too busy. Okay, but are you now talking about the new earth or are you talking about the heavens? New earth. Okay. You asked me, you know, what what they're going to go right. after they leave the city. Right. They're going to go back outside the city to the regions that they've been assigned to mm -hmm. and enjoy life. So we should understand the spiritual, eternal, minimal enjoyment. It can't even be comprehended from a, a human perspective. There's no comparison. No, no. It, no, it says talking about all your enjoyment is going to be righteous. Yeah. It's going to be something that is of a positive, pure, wholesome nature. That I had something to do with being in that position to where I can enjoy it fuller than if I was on the earth. Sure. Amen.